Today we shall reflect on the life of Saint Anselm. Born in Aosta in the Italian Alps, Saint Anselm came from the noble Lombard family. His mother, Ermenberga, a Burgundian, was a pious woman, but after her death, his father's violence and harshness led Anselm to flee home. After several years of wandering in France, he took the Benedictine habit in 1060 at Bec, where his illustrious countryman, Blessed Lanfranc, had started his famous school. Soon, outstanding for his learning, within a span of 3 years, he was made prior, and after another 15 years, despite his reluctance, he was made the abbot. While at Bec, he wrote his well-known philosophical and theological works the monologium and the proslogium with the ontological argument for the existence of god as abbot anselm had to cross over to england from time to time in connection with his abbey's english properties he thereby came to be so known and highly esteemed for his virtues of holiness and prudence that In the year 1093 he was made archbishop of Canterbury in the hope that he would be able to cope with the encroachments of King William the Red. William had kept the see of Canterbury vacant for 4 years after the death of Lanfranc in order to seize its income. Anselm's insistence on reforming the church and maintaining her rights saw him now banished to the continent by the king. However, William's successor, Henry the 1st, recalled him in the year 1100, but the encroachments continued and a second exile followed. Reconciliation was not effected until 1107, when the king relinquished his claim to investing bishops and abbots, though the latter was permitted by the pope to take an oath of allegiance in the light of the temporal possessions. Two years later, Anselm died at Canterbury on the 21st of April, 1109. Gentle and self-effacing by nature, Saint Anselm was unyielding on matters of principle. A man of fearless zeal, he strongly denounced the slave trade and staunchly defended the filioque, a doctrine that indicated matter of faculty that the Holy Spirit proceeded from the father and the son many important writings of this noble prelate who was considered the greatest intellect of his age and pattern for all theologians were composed during his two banishments the deep and abiding influence which his thinking has had upon the church's philosophy and theology has earned him the titles of father of scholasticism and doctor of the universal church